This episode has been brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. Today I'm going to tell you some more about molybdenum wires and show you some amazing micrographs. Pictures, the likes of which I've never seen before. So let me remind some of you that we did an experiment, or Neil did an experiment, where he put a high current through a piece of molybdenum wire, a piece of horizontal molybdenum wire. And amazingly, at the end, we got blobs of material all the way along the wire, separated very regularly. And the first thing we had to do was to see whether this experiment could be repeated. So we did the experiment two or three times again, and each time we got the same result. Now, when we did it the first time, I suggested that what was happening was that we were forming a liquid on the surface and that surface tension was separating the liquid into little droplets. In fact, these droplets have a technical name which I learnt by looking at some papers. They're called unduloids. Our last video in which we showed you these undeloids got people very excited and quite a number of viewers suggested in the comments that we should try heating the wire in a vertical position because then if a liquid was being formed it would run down. So when somebody proposes a test like that you've got to try it. And you were right. Instead of getting regular blobs, what happened was the liquid formed and ran down. We got a big blob at the bottom and a tiny one where the wire had burnt through. So nothing, and it's, there's a bit falling off down there. Mm -hmm a little bit there, and it's all congealed down there. It looked as if the regular anduloids were starting to form, but then it didn't happen, and the liquid ran down and formed one big blob at the bottom. And the wire then broke, and there was a small blob left at the end of the broken wire. So I was really pleased because it confirmed my suggestion that there was liquid. But that raises quite a different problem, which is why should there be liquid? But the clue came when Neil took one of these wires to our nanotechnology center and there they can use an electron microscope to take images of the anduloids or the surface of the anduloid. And what came back was absolutely amazing. One of the pictures, my favorite one, looks like an underwater coral reef, particularly the feature in the middle has almost perfect threefold symmetry and with things coming off at 120 degrees apart. I showed this to my colleague Andre, who said something almost as a throwaway remark which helped to solve the whole problem. He said, could it be oxide rather than metal? So then I began thinking. When you heat the wire, you would expect it to melt in the middle because the outside can lose heat, so the centre should be hotter. But we were heating it 
in air, so perhaps the surface of the metal was burning and forming oxide. Then, of course, it would be hotter on the outside because of the chemical reaction. So I looked up the melting point of molybdenum oxides. Both the oxides, molybdenum dioxide and molybdenum trioxide, have melting points that are nearly a thousand degrees lower than that of molybdenum metal. So what that means is if you form oxide, it could melt way below the temperature at which the metal would melt. So the metal would be solid and the liquid be on top. The other thing is that the density of the oxide is about half that of the density of the metal. So if you form the oxide, you will get a bigger volume of liquid than the volume of the metal that you burn. So you get more liquid than you might expect just from melting. And because the micrograph showed that it was all frothy, it's probably got an even lower density, which is why they suddenly appear so big. It turns out that droplets forming in a regular space are quite a well-known phenomenon. You see it in all sorts of circumstances. If you take a tap, force it for the Americans, and start water going quite fast, and then gradually turn it off, you'll suddenly find the stream of liquid will break up into a series of droplets. And this is just the same effect as we're seeing here with the wire. Then, of course, what we have to do is to test, is it molybdenum oxide? So, with our new samples, Neil went back to the Nanotechnology Centre, where, as well as taking the pictures, they can do an elemental analysis on the electron microscope. So you can look at different areas of the surface. Hi, come in. Wow. All right, what have we got? And lo and behold, where there was one of these blobs, the surface had oxygen in it as well as molybdenum. But where there were no blobs, there was very little oxygen. Not none, but very much less. So the theory looked really quite good. But when you have a theory, you need to test your theory or your hypothesis with a prediction. So I predicted that if we heated the wire under vacuum, when there's no air, so the molybdenum couldn't burn, we shouldn't get the anduloids. So Neil got one of his sophisticated vacuum chambers with a window, and we started heating the wire, and we got amazingly bright light, sort of super light bulb. Super, super bright. I'm turning everything down on the camera. I think Neil's impressed. He's gone to go and get the, uh, the device so we can measure the current. The wire got hotter and hotter and hotter, but not a trace of anduloid. And then, when everything had cooled down, the wire, instead of being black, was shiny, like you would expect a metal. So not only did it show that oxygen was needed to form the anduloids, but it also showed that oxygen was attacking the surface and making oxide layers. So just heating it up drove off whatever muck there was on the surface and left a really nice clean piece of molybdenum wire. Also, when Neil opened the chamber, there was clearly a very thin film that had evaporated and you could tell it was thin because it had a rainbow of colours and you get these colours by diffraction of light by very thin films. Because it went to such a high temperature, the molybdenum was evaporating 
It didn't have to boil because the pressure was lower, but some of the molybdenum and vapour was coming off and it hit the cold surface and condensed. The important message is that this experiment, which began really as a fun experiment with a piece of molybdenum, has not only made us think and understand something about heating wires in air that we hadn't really thought about before, but it has given us these amazing pictures. And my favourite one is free to download in the description below. So we've been going deep with our molybdenum wire. But if you want to go deeper into the topics you love, why not check out today's episode sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. They have world experts on all sorts of topics. I'd be pretty happy here going from Apollo 11 to some baseball history. But for all you chemistry fans, well, you're more than catered for. Understanding the periodic table. Chemistry and our universe. There's a whopping 60 half-hour lectures here. How about some organic chemistry? Still not had enough? There's even more chemistry. For a free trial and access to the Great Courses Plus incredible library of educational gems across all topics, go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash periodic videos. Get this stuff streaming on your TV, your tablet, laptop, phone, apps, all sorts. That address again, thegreatcoursesplus.com slash periodic videos, a free trial, and it'll let them know you came from here.